Okay, so let's talk about uh, the uh, graph editor. This is a, one of the most important tools in Maya, and from an animator's point of view, probably the most important tool. Um, there's, um, uh, uh, there, there's also a technical lecture on the um, graph editor separately where we're actually opening up Maya, but for now I just want to show you some slides to illustrate what the graph editor does to give you an idea of, of how it functions and how incredibly useful it is when you're animating. Okay, so um, what, what, what is the graph editor? That's the first question we need to ask. And the, the answer is, it's a system for calculating time and distance. And it shows us where any given object is in time and space. And this is obviously incredibly useful for animation because the two principal components of animation are timing and spacing. Timing, which is to say how long an action takes, and spacing, uh, which is to say uh, the, the trajectory of an object, the amount of distance it covers, um, how far it goes. These are the two main elements of animation, timing and spacing, and, and uh, the graph editor shows us those two elements, uh, and I'll, I'll um, show you how it uh, does so. Okay, so let's take an example of a ball traveling in the x-axis. Now you'll remember um, from your maths at school, uh, the y-axis is the vertical axis, and the x-axis is the horizontal axis. In Maya, because it's 3D, that is to say three dimensions, We've got one more axis, axis, that's Z, or Z, if you're in the States, uh, and that's the axis that's, coming, uh, the axis that's coming towards us. So that's 3D space. But in terms of the maths you did at school, Y is the vertical axis, H is the horizontal axis. So we're going to take an example of a ball going from screen uh, left to screen right. So screen right is where it's going to. This is where it's coming from, from left to right from left to right, from left to right. Okay, I think you get the general idea. You need to, yes. Okay, so um, <clears throat> here's the graph editor, and here's uh, a ball uh, uh, traveling from left to right. Now, what does this curve here, or this very flat curve, tell us about how the ball is traveling? And the answer is that this curve shows us that the ball is traveling in a, uh, in a, in a flat curve, which is to say, there is no slow in or slow out. Uh, there's no acceleration or deceleration. The ball is traveling at a completely constant speed. And it's traveling in the x-axis. So if we flip back one, it's going to be traveling in this axis here. It's going from left to right. Um, and it's doing that at a completely constant speed. Now we can look at the y-axis here, which isn't doing anything, and the z-axis here, which also isn't doing anything. And that shows that the y values and the z values are not changing. Therefore, there's no change in, in y, there's no motion up and down, and there's motion, no motion coming towards us in z. If you look down here in the graph editor, you'll see uh, some numbers counting from left to right. There's frame 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on, ending at frame 25. In this case, we can see uh, that the ball has traveled uh, for, uh, for 24 or 25 frames, which is to say just over one second. So we know that the ball is taking 25 frames, just under one second, to travel its complete distance. And the amount of distance it's traveling in the y-axis is calculated from here. So from bottom to top, we know that the ball has traveled 12 units on the grid of the, um, uh, of, the, of the Maya grid. That's the grid you see when you first open up Maya. We know that here the ball has traveled 12 units. So y-axis is distance, x-axis, uh, that is to say uh, uh, the, the, the counting of the timeline is, is ho the horizontal x-axis. That's how long it's taking. In this case, one second, and the amount it's traveling, 12 units in the grid. Okay, let's have another. Let's have a look at another example. Um, here's a ball uh, also traveling in the x-axis. We've just got that one highlighted in the uh, graph editor, uh, and the ball here uh, is either accelerating or decelerating. What do you think the ball is doing? <laughs> I can't hear your answer, obviously. But if you thought the ball was slowing down, you are wrong. The ball is in fact speeding up. And we can tell this because we've got the same amount of time here, 25 frames, uh, but the distance travelled is very, very small for the first 
12 or 13 frames. The ball is hardly going anywhere up to frame 13. So for half a second, the distance travelled in the y-axis is very, very small. But for the second half of that second, from frame uh, 12 or 13 to 25, the ball is travelling a very great distance. It's travelling all this distance here. And that shows that the ball is starting off slow and speeding up. And we can tell that without even looking at the animation of the ball. And that's why the graph editor is so powerful. And that's why it's so important that you master it uh, when you're animating in Maya. If you don't master the graph editor, you will not become a good animator. Therefore, you must master the graph editor. Uh, and, and ultimately, the graph editor becomes your friend because it's so powerful and so useful that it allows you to um, uh, see what's happening without even playing back the animation. OK, let's look at another example. What about this one? Is the ball here either accelerating or decelerating? Hopefully, if you understood the last one, you'll see that the ball is decelerating. In other words, it's starting off fast from frame 1 to 13. You can see that the ball is traveling a large amount of distance. It's traveling uh, almost 12 um, units on the, uh, on the grid. But for the second part of this second, from frames 13 to 25, the ball is hardly traveling anywhere at all. And that's so it starts off very fast and then slows down. So this is like a, a, an object being maybe launched, not quite out of the barrel of a gun, but launched off very rapidly at the beginning and then slowing down uh, as friction uh, brings it to a halt. Let's look at uh, another example. What about this one? And here, what we can see is the ball starting off slow, speeding up in the middle, and then slowing down again. Starting off slow because there's very little distance traveled um, in, in Y, and then speeding up, speeding up lots of distance, lots of distance traveled, and then slowing down again. So we know that this is what we would call in animation uh, uh, a slow out and then a slow in, or sometimes called an ease out or an ease in, and so also sometimes called cushioning at either end. We've got a cushioning because it starts off slow, speeds up, and then cushions in at the end. Okay, what about this one? What's happening here? Uh, the answer, of course, is the ball starts off slow, travels a great distance, and then starts to go backwards. This ball is actually going is going forward in the x-axis, so it's, go from, it's going to go from screen left to screen right, and then back again. And we know that it's moving backwards because if you look at the distance traveled here in the y-axis, it's going from um, eight points on the grid back to uh, three points on the grid. So it's actually traveling backwards in the in the x-axis. It's slowing down here and then it's going to speed up uh, and then slow in at around about uh, point 0.12 on the grid. So I can tell without even looking at what the ball is doing that the, the this curve shows us the ball speeding up, slowing down, moving backwards and then moving forwards again all in the x-axis. Okay, what about this one? Okay, here the ball is on a stepped curve and we'll, we'll, there's a separate lecture on, on stepped curves and spline curves in Maya, um, but a stepped curve is a, is a way of forcing the graph editor to show you a pose test. So instead of showing you smooth motion, the graph editor will show you a pose test. It will, it will, it will, it will snap from one pose to another. So we're in stepped curves here, the ball is held in position from frame 1 to frame 24, uh, where it doesn't move at all. And then suddenly, at frame 25, it snaps into position here. So this is a pose test on stepped curves. The ball is doing uh, timing. As par time is passing here. The ball isn't moving. It's not moving. It's moving. Suddenly, bang, frame 25, the ball will snap to screen right. Very useful if you're trying to shoot a, uh, shoot a pose test. Uh, not useful if you're trying to get fluid motion. OK, let's look at another example. What about, what is the ball doing here? These, this is an example of what we call evil curves in, in Maya. These are really nasty, yucky curves. The ball, the ball starts off fast, slows down, speeds up again, goes back for no particular reason, goes back for no particular reason, overshoots, comes back again, and then speeds up. These are nasty curves. This will give you a disjointed staccato action. And again, it's why you need to focus so closely on what's going in in the graph editor because uh, you need to avoid this kind of curve showing up 
Um, uh, and um, if you get evil curves in your graph editor, your animation is going to look nasty. So one of the jobs you have as an animator is to clean up your curves and make sure that you don't get evil curves. Uh, here's the same thing shown in, um, in, a, in a sort of 2D format. Um, and these are some uh, drawings done by um, a friend of mine, uh, Sidney Padua, who is an incredibly talented animator um, and has done some wonderful work on many films where I've worked with her. And, and these, are, these are her drawings. And uh, she's showing here the difference between stepped curves, which are very good for blocking out a shot, especially if you want uh, 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 to shoot a pose test, um, and the difference between that and linear curves, which we won't do much of because you very rarely want to do linear curves in Maya. Uh, but th this gives you very straight motion. Remember the first example we saw in the ball, this would be, this would be a very, very straight, unnatural kind of uh, motion. Um, this is a more common kind of curve. This is a spline curve. Here we've got a, uh, a slow out and then a slow in at the end. This is pretty standard curve. You're going to see a lot of this in, um, in your animation. And here is, a, here is also a very common curve. This is where something is anticipating. Here the ball uh, starts, moves backwards, speeds up, overshoots, and then settles again. And this is, a, this is what Sydney calls a bread and butter animation curve. And, and um, the reason for this is this is pretty standard. This could be a character, um, you know, a recoil and then a jump and then a settle. Or if it was a fist, the fist is traveling backwards, then the punch and then the settle again. So it's an anticipation, overshoot and settle. Pretty standard um, <clears throat> animation curve. Again, evil curves. These are, this is Sydney's uh, um, uh, term here. Um, this is the animator who's not paying good attention to the um, to graph editor. Uh, and finally, another evil curve here, kind of drifty. Uh, you'll see these commonly in people's graph editors, kind of drifty with, without any um, force behind it. <clears throat> so if I just return to the original example of the ball moving from left to right, um, all of these curves are showing how this ball might move from left to right. But it is incredibly important to get to know the graph editor and get to know how to use it well because it is your biggest ally in producing um, good animation. So when you're animating you always want to make sure that whatever you're doing, you, whenever you change anything in your, in your perspective view, you're always looking at the graph editor at the same time. Okay, thanks for listening and um, uh, do check out the, the uh, technical lecture which shows uh, doing this in uh, real time.